Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and the folks from Element 14 sent along their new Raspberry Pi 2. And in case you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi, it is a $35 computer on a little circuit board that you can plug into a monitor and keyboard and get yourself a pretty functional little computer for about $35. And these have been out for a while, uh, but this new one is a lot faster. So we're going to kind of step through the hardware first. Uh, we're going to boot, boot it up and run some uh, basic internet tasks and some basic computing kinds of things. Then we're going to take a look at Open ELEC, which is a uh, way to play movies on it. We'll play back some uh, really uh, heavy-duty Blu-ray files to see how those hold up. And the second video that I'm going to do, a little two-parter this time, uh, we're going to look at retro gaming as well and see how it can run uh, some great classic games in emulation. And what we're going to do is stack it up against the old version of the Raspberry Pi, uh, which is this one here, the B+, which actually looks very similar, but uh, this new one is a lot more powerful. So it has a much faster processor uh, and more memory, so it can do a lot more. So let's step through the hardware, and then I'll point out uh, some of the differences with the old one. Everything is in the same exact place as the B+. So if you have a case or some kind of special project that kind of relied on uh, all these screws being in the right place and the, and the pins being the same, uh, everything really is identical as far as where things are situated on the hardware. So if you have uh, some money invested in how the old one was laid out, this new one will be uh, laid out exactly the same way. Uh, so you have your power adapter here. This is just a standard USB plug. You need about, probably it's safe to have about two amps of USB power to uh, boot this thing up and run with it. You have HDMI out here for plugging it into a high definition display. Uh, this little uh, uh, thing here is for a camera. They actually have a camera module that you can plug into it so you can uh, take uh, pictures and have it uh, drop into your uh, programs that you might write with it. Uh, right here is a analog video and audio out so you can plug into an old uh, tube style TV, an old standard definition TV if you want to do that. You've got Ethernet here. You have four USB ports so you can plug in a keyboard, mouse, and uh, you know, Wi-Fi and other uh, little modules. It doesn't have Wi-Fi built in, but you can, of course, get a USB uh, Wi-Fi adapter and get that on there. Uh, over here is the GPIO pins, and this is where the community has really sprung up around the Raspberry Pi because uh, this, again, is, is 35 bucks, very inexpensive, very capable. It's a full computer that runs a, a version of Linux or whatever you want to put on it that can uh, run on here, and it's really become quite a thing where people are making sensors and, and robotics and all sorts of stuff that they can communicate with using all of these pins up here. So if you're a hobbyist looking to uh, have a computer control board to do stuff, this is a really good way to get started without having to build your own computer. You can basically buy this, uh, install what you need, and uh, get it up and running. Now, the changes from uh, this one from the prior version of the Raspberry Pi is right over here with the processor. So this is a new uh, quad-core ARM V7 processor at 900 megahertz. The old one was a single-core uh, at 700 megahertz, running with the ARM v6 architecture. So this has uh, got new architecture, more cores, and slightly faster clock speed. So it's going to deliver uh, some significantly better performance in many cases. And you're going to see that uh, in a few minutes when we put these two head to head. Now on the back, you'll notice there's a new chip here that wasn't on the old one. And actually what this is is the RAM. Uh, so what they've done is they've moved the RAM from underneath the processor on the old one uh, to a separate spot on the board. And this is now a gigabyte of RAM compared to 512 megs on the old one. So you get double the RAM as well. And like the old one, it runs uh, on the micro SD card for its hard drive. So this is what you're going to boot from. And they have a bunch of drive images that you can download on the internet uh, to get this thing up and running very quickly. So you don't really need to know any programming to really get started with this thing. You can download, they actually have a, a distribution called New that you can download uh, to get started with right away and kind of start poking around. And it's really a great way to learn Linux because you, know, you could screw it up, but it's really not going to uh, cost you a lot of uh, aggravation. You can just re-image the card and uh, start over from scratch again. So uh, pretty cool stuff. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to hook up everything. It's going to take me a few minutes here. Uh, get everything hooked up, and we're going to put these two head to head. The first thing we're going to do is just boot up its standard operating system, poke around on Chrome a little bit, and then we'll see uh, what else we can do. All right, so we've got the new one hooked up here, the old one hooked up there, and I'm going to apply power to both, and we'll see how fast they boot up. These are configured with the exact same operating system, so uh, we'll let it go here and uh, get booted. And uh, one of the things that uh, is important to point out is that the new one does consume a little bit more power. So it's 800 milliamps uh, at 5 volts versus 600 milliamps at 5 volts. So just keep that in mind if you have 
projects that are using uh, power in a certain way. But as you can see here, the, sec the new one is way, way faster in uh, getting its menu up and running here and getting to the uh, main uh, screen. Now I've configured these to boot right into uh, their graphical user interface, but you can uh, configure them to go into just the standard uh, shell if you want to do that as well. So we'll just wait here for the uh, original to get caught up and then we'll uh, try loading up Chrome and see how that works. So you saw how fast the new one booted up versus the old one, a lot faster. So let's uh, cut over here now and try to load up Chrome on both right at the same time. Let's see uh, how much faster it boots that way. Now Chromium is what we're running here, which is the uh, kind of the, uh, the beta version of Chrome. But you'll see here we've clicked on it and now we'll wait uh, for the old one on the left here to catch up again. So we've already got Chrome uh, loaded up. It's actually not a bad browsing experience. I'm just going to go visit the New York Times on uh, both of these machines here real quick and I'll hit the enter key at the same time so we can see how fast it comes up and hopefully I typed that incorrectly and I will hit uh, enter on both here and we'll see uh, just how much faster one loads versus the other one. Again, uh, we're dealing with a much faster processor with more cores on the Pi 2 uh, so you have the ability really to do a lot more a lot faster and it's to the point where it's almost usable uh, as a you know kind of a web browsing kind of device as you can see the page comes up you know not very fast but certainly faster than it does on the original with chrome i did want to show you how their own web browser works on the new device this one's called the epiphany browser it comes with uh, the Raspbian OS that you'll install on it so you can get a feel for uh, how much faster this one is than Chrome. It's certainly a no frills browser but uh, it does a pretty decent job and it is a lot more usable and a lot faster than Chrome is at the moment. I think over time as they begin to optimize the operating system, they optimize the web browser, I think we might see uh, better uh, performance out of it but it still is pretty usable and it's a lot faster than the prior generation Raspberry Pi. So now we're going to do something more fun, uh, is load up Open Elec and we're going to play some Blu-ray movies and see how they perform that way. All right, we'll repeat our boot test with Open Elec. It is a very optimized boot process on the Open Elec side, so you'll see how uh, fast both of them come up here. So let me pull up our uh, little screen here and you can watch them both boot. And the Pi 2, of course, will boot faster, so we'll let it uh, pop open here. And we are ready to watch some movies on the Pi 2 and we're still waiting on the Pi 1. So again, you can see just how uh, having that new processor really does speed up the, uh, the boot process. These both have the same exact memory card, um, pretty much the same version of Kodi. One is written for the Raspberry 2 and the other one is for the original, but again, you can see the difference in boot time. All right, now that Open Elec is booted, we're going to run some Blu-ray MKV files that I pulled off of a disc that I own. This is the Star Trek movie we test all the time. I've got a really high bin with high-powered NAS down in the basement. I have tested this before. I could run multiple Blu-ray streams to machines that are capable of displaying that content. So now we're going to see how these two guys can stack up. Again, the original is on the left and the new one is on the right. I hit enter at the exact same time. And as you can see, the uh, movie has already started playing on the Pi 2. We're getting a cache full warning on the original because it doesn't have all that much RAM. And as you can see, the original is kind of getting a little caught up here. It's having some trouble keeping up with the, uh, the bit rate that's flowing over the network here. Uh, and again, this, will, this is irrespective of the fact that we're streaming this movie uh, from two uh, devices simultaneously. Even on its own, when I was testing it just individually, uh, it wasn't able to keep up with that. Uh, the mouse does move a little bit slower when this is going on the Pi 2, but I can seek ahead here to a different part of the movie and it'll queue up really quickly. No slowdown, no pauses, no drop frames that I can see. Uh, so this is looking really, really good. So I'm pretty, uh, pretty impressed with this overall. Um, we have in the past uh, tested uh, MPEG-2 streams for my HD home run on the original. Those ran great. I expect they will run uh, just as well on the Pi 2. But this is really a high bitrate Blu-ray stuff that's really hard to do on uh, low-end hardware. So you can see the difference now uh, that we're seeing with uh, the Raspberry Pi 2. So a lot of horsepower on there. I think what's nice about this is that you do have more RAM. You have a lot more processing power both with the additional cores and uh, with the uh, ability to get a little bit of a higher clock speed out of the processor plus the fact that it's running a more advanced ARM architecture. So all of those things combined that if you have very uh, high CPU intensive projects, uh, the Pi 2 is going to do a lot better at those uh, than the original will. And as you can see, even with some general computing tasks and multimedia and that sort of thing, uh, we're seeing some tremendous performance gains here. So now what we're going to do uh, is conclude part one of this review and we're going to start up part two in the next video and we'll take a look and see how uh, retro gaming compares between the two devices.